actively try and assess the Biden administration and, and work out where it is on the ideological spectrum. I guess people, the default setting for most people on this side of the pond would have been that Biden's a kind of moderate, middle of the road kind of Democrat, not a particularly left wing Democrat. That appears to be his antecedents. But then you look at some of the numbers here, as I say, an attempt to pass nearly six trillion dollars of spending, a very hard line on COVID, including attempting to ram through vaccine mandates on all US businesses employing more than 250 people. I think that's running into trouble in the courts. And I'm told here, you might, I, I don't know if you're aware of this, attempting to confirm a bank regulator who is a former communist and wants to abolish private banking. This doesn't sound like a particularly middle of the road administration. You, you say these things like they surprise you. You know, the old Biden has always been kind of um, the butt of jokes in America. He, he was that silly daffy uncle that would come to thanksgiving dinner and, and say awkward things and do things wrong and and you and make all the gaffes well now he's our president and america did not choose biden america chose not trump and there's a huge difference there and there's also a very important lesson here that a president doesn't steer the nation as much as you think he is answering to the left wing of his party. I see it in my home state of Colorado, where we have a remarkably progressive uh, legislature and the progressive governor can't stand up to him. The mm -hmm. same thing in Washington, D.C., and that every every challenge we have, there is a federal response and um, and, he, and he can't break free. He mm -hmm. is a very weak president and therefore we don't know what he stands for. I when you and I have had this conversation. When Trump was in office, I decided to judge him not by what he said, but what he did, what he vetoed, what he signed, who he appointed. I'll do the same for, for this president. And at this point, um, he might be one of the worst presidents of my lifetime. And he's not even a year in. Antonella, let me come back to you, because we, we've seen an upsurge in populism in Latin America. Is the USA following suit? I mean, again, from this side of the pond, we uh, and as John just said, when when Biden was uh, uh, elected, we kind of thought, oh, well, that's the end. You know, the Americans have called an end to populism. But do you think the sort of populism that we typically associate with countries in Latin America is now a major phenomenon in the United States? Yes, I totally agree. And I think there's a all, we can also see it as a global phenomenon because we see something like a pendulum that goes from the right to the left and the left to the right. And it's always like that. And it's, and, you know, it get more extreme all the time. But I would like to mention two aspects of, um, of, of, of this topic. One is wealth and the other is populism. And when it comes to wealth, I think that one of the things that I that I actually see here in the U.S. that has been very common in in Latin America is a is that we demonize the entrepreneurs, we demonize the creators, we demonize the innovators, and we punish success all the time. And that's not the way to end poverty. The best way to end poverty is by you know, creating wealth, not taxing wealth, just like um, uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez wants to do it, like tax the rich or um, distributing wealth. And that's something we have been doing a lot in Latin America. We distribute wealth, we tax wealth, and that's, I mean, we are, we are you know, that's one of the, the poorest regions in, in the world. And of course, the rise of populism. And that's another characteristic that, that I see in, in the U.S., not only with Biden, but also with the former administration. And it becomes this pendulum that I was that I was that I was talking about um, that goes from the left to the right and it get you know, more extreme all the time. I always say that no country is vaccinated uh, against populism. And, and I like that phrase that that says something like um, the populace will cut your legs will give you crutches and will tell you that if it wasn't for him, you wouldn't be able to walk. And that's just the way they operate uh, in Latin America. And we can see that right now in, in the US. Well, if you enjoyed that conversation, why not watch one of these other videos? And while you're here, remember to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you'll never miss out on a single IEA broadcast.